Yep, good. You can see my Kramer in the background. Hey guys, welcome back to Decaf. My name is Alex. I hope you're all doing very well uh, stuck at home or wherever you are. If your restrictions have been lifted, I hope you're all staying safe. I just wanted to make a video about my favorite camera uh, and I thought I could share some of my thoughts, feelings and photos with you guys uh, and just show my adoration for this camera. So today we're gonna be looking at my Yashica Flex. That's that bad boy right there. The camera that I have is apparently the Yashica Flex Model A. It comes equipped with an 80mm 3.5 lens. Now, of course, this is a TLR, which means you have two lenses, one which you look through and one which the photo is actually taken through. Now, I've owned this camera for probably about a year now after purchasing it for around $70. When I first found it in Japan, in Shinjuku, it was up on the wall and I had believed that it was scrap. When I saw the price on it, I just thought it was just for parts or something like that. And I asked, I asked the lovely man there and he said, no. And still to this day, I'm kind of like, how'd I get it for $70? It's a great camera and it was an awesome way for me to step into the medium format game again with my own camera that wasn't a Holger. Like, no hate to Holger. Don't hate me. For $70, getting into 6x6 uh, format, 120 film, like, you can't really go wrong. And I was itching to try it once I got home, once I got back to Australia. Of all the cameras, I think of all the cameras that I do own, this is the one that gets me excited to go out and shoot. I don't think any other camera really compares because you know you're not gonna be taking tons of photos and it's just something about the thought process, how slow and methodical you have to be. Its main selling point is the thing that everyone talks about. I don't really wanna go into specifics or too many details here, but the ground glass that you look through when you're looking down into the camera create such a surreal, almost 3D-like field of view that if only my eyes could see in this manner, you know, then we'd be seeing a lot more. It's, it's almost like a surreal reality. It's, it, I can't describe it. It's actually brilliant to use. Obviously it is inverted though, so it is a bit disorienting to use. But apart from that, I don't really have any arms with, with the camera in that regard. This is my first TLR and will probably to this point be the only one that I'll purchase because for what it is, it is perfect and I don't see myself replacing it. Perhaps one of the main downsides of this camera is that it is a fixed lens. Now that is somewhat of a problem if you want that versatility. It is an 80 millimeter lens, which doesn't really allow you to get that close and doesn't give that real subject separation that you would really want to utilize with this format. An alternative, a camera that you can change lenses that is a TLR would be the Mamiya C330. Okay, the format is awesome. It's square and it has really given me a greater appreciation for square format. And for some reason now I'm cropping all my other photos into square format. So maybe I've, I've been converted. I'm seeing the world in this way now. Uh, this may happen to you. So here's a warning. Uh, don't get angry at me though. Now, I also just want to quickly run you through some of my favorite images taken with this camera. I know this video is a bit of a different style to what you're used to. Considering the current climate, I just thought I'd try something new, so let me know what you think of it down below. You have to be taking either your mobile phone around with you so you can be metering, or you can get an old light meter to use that as well. Uh, both are good. I have a great app that I use. Uh, I can link that down below if you guys wanna check that out. This camera does have a maximum shutter speed of 1 to 100. Now that is, that is not gonna be freezing too much motion and you'll actually notice that a lot of camera manufacturers tell you not to handhold lower than 1 one twenty fifth. You can, but I probably don't recommend it all that often just because of the fear of the camera shake. Another thing that I'll just quickly touch on is that this camera allows you to take double exposures or multiple exposures so easily it is crazy. You need to do the, the half press down here so you're ready to get the photo taken. Okay, so everything's ready. To actually release the shutter, you're pulling this, this shutter release here. That goes and it goes back up. You can actually just take another photo. I really enjoy the images I get from this camera. I don't see any reason why I would ever sell it. If anything, this gives me a much greater appreciation for medium format. And now that's kind of all I want to shoot. I don't know if this is going to push you in the direction of, hey, I want to start shooting medium format because it's a very expensive hobby or uh, if you want to turn it into something that you do professionally. But look, this camera is awesome. It is 100% awesome. Anyway, guys, I hope you have enjoyed what you've seen here. I hope this has been somewhat informative. Maybe it'll help you decide whether you want to purchase a TLR. I honestly believe for its value, can't really beat it. 
obviously I paid $70 for this. A quick search tells me they're around 150, but if this is your step into the medium format game, you do it. That's all I can say. The process is so, it's slow, and I think that helps the results. And that brings us to the end. I'll catch you on the next one, and let's hope it's not too far away. Take care of yourselves.